But yeah, here, here's the, here, here's how we're going to start this off on the no jokes ass saga. Let's start with this uh, person, Misha Schizzarella. She does this shit all the time about like how she's a big fan of mine. She's like, she's like talked about how uh, she's the biggest, like she, th she will post stuff like, uh, she usually just like post shit that gets me in trouble because she'll behave like an unhinged fan, right? If you send me the when mom sends the poop sock memes uh, over and over again, I'm going to fucking, I'm going to clap you. You just took an hour off, but uh, that will turn very quickly into a 24 hour ban for you. Anyway, so yeah, she did the, she's done a bunch of these like threads that are obviously outrage bait. Like it's just so stupid. Why would you ever take this shit seriously? Yeah, she did that post about me being the most famous Turk. I feel like we have all collectively become like 35% more autistic by being online all the time. Okay? Like, I don't know what the fuck happened where, like, I don't know if it's, it's that we have all become like impossible to comprehend social cues or the internet itself is not exactly a great place for that sort of thing anyway. But it just feels as though we have zero way of wanting to fucking find out like whether or not something is serious or not. And I think half of the reason for that is because it's like kind of easy to just get a quick dunk in. You can't just become autistic. I know, man. See, you're doing the thing. I'm joking. Okay? What I did was a joke. You literally did the thing that I'm saying in the process of me saying it. Like, when I said the internet, I feel like has collectively become 35% more autistic. I'm joking. You can't become autistic. There is no such thing as like becoming, especially 35% autistic. When I make a joke like that, think about it and go, hmm, I wonder how he would be able to craft mathematically the percentages of how much more autistic one can become. Okay, well, I'm autistic, so my bad. No, I know. I, first of all, yes, I know. So then listen to my words. When you, when, I, when you hear something that I say that's like a little off, just question it a little bit like what did he mean by this was he joking or was he actually being serious like nikki haley when she said if you go on tiktok for an hour you become 34 percent more anti-semitic like that is not a joke she's saying that seriously because you have context right you have context for why that's not a joke she's saying that on a fucking debate stage obviously contextually that is not I mean, it's, it reads like a fucking joke because it's so stupid, right? But that's serious. When your favorite content creator, Hassan Hassanabi Piker, says, you know, the internet has made us 35% more autistic, like, I'm clearly joking. Anyway, except for just myself. I, I do feel like, for me, I, I have, like, by way of Twitch streaming, become... Uh, <laughs> It's unlocked my, my inner autism potential, I think. But that's a separate thing. Anyway. But what I was trying to say is, with this, like, this is a bait post, right? This person makes posts like this all the fucking time. It's just, like, supposed to not be serious, but people take it seriously. And that's a little bit part of the joke, is that, like, she crafts it in a way that people get mad. Taylor Swift is to white women what uh, M milk was for black people. How Taylor Swift is restoring the reputation of civil rights of white women everywhere, a thread. So she also like popped off when she said Travis Kelsey has like a mental disability and Travis, uh, and, and Taylor Swift is like, Taylor Swift is in an inappropriate age gap uh, relationship with like Travis Kelsey. Anyway, she does shit like this all the time. Okay. And people, I think, take this super seriously for two reasons. One, because like no one has the capacity to understand if someone is being serious or they're saying something in jest in on purpose. Like, can we talk about Mr. B's silence regarding the war uh, Gaza and how it exposed him as a total fraud? 
he could single-handedly finance various groups in Gaza to fight for freedom and yet and help people, but refuses to do so. He hasn't even talked about it yet. <coughs> <coughs> and then motherfuckers' community noted it. Giving weapons to Hamas would violate multiple federal laws and leave the stiff prison sentences. Like, the entire point is for this person to get quote retweeted and dunked on. That's why she posts this shit. Okay, even Ludwig fell for that last night. I know. It's so incredibly fucking stupid. Literally, if you just read her replies to people under the post, is clearly joking. It's so in- incredibly dumb to, like, think that this is real. And people do think it's real. They jump on it and they go, oh, my God. For one, they do it because there are a lot of people that, you know, say unhinged shit online and mean it super seriously. But the other reason why people do this the other reason why people do this specifically is because they want to get they want to get an easy dunk it's just shit posting this person is not being serious but people want to get a fucking slammer on you know what i mean and what is it's literally this like quote tweeting this and being like wow the left is sure out of control is the equivalent okay of dunking on a lowered rim over a child in a wheelchair, okay? With a trampoline in front of the kid. You're not like, you're not dunking on anything. This is like, it's fucking ridiculous. What are you doing? It makes me so mad. That people just do this, like, it, this is the equivalent. I mean, this is all, like, easily tricked adults, uh, as M. Hud calls them, right? M. Hud says these are easily tricked adults, and it's, it's basically that. I mean, this is, this is the, these are the type of people that, like, yell about Onion article headlines. You know what I mean? Like, they see an Onion article headline, and they go, that's, what the fuck are we doing? I can't believe this outlet this reputable media outlet, The Onion, is doing it again, doing the damn thing one more time. Mr. Beast has a net worth of $53 million. A single piece of aid costs around five hundred. dollars Mr. Beast can purchase and ship at least 103K units of aid. The cost to stop this aid will be 100K per unit for Israel. Mr. Beast can cause $10.3 billion worth of damage against the occupier. The people of Gaza are trapped too, by the way, and a lot longer than 100 days. Do something instead of just making videos and ignoring the biggest issue of our lifetimes at Mr. Beast. So, incredibly stupid shit. Uh, Incredibly, like, it's clearly a fucking joke, but people were just like, huh, actually, you can't do that because that's illegal. Like, look at this. The Israel War Room. Financing terror organizations is illegal. Mr. Beast would go to jail if he did what you're telling him to. It's funny for me because I'm part of the audience for these posts, but the thing is that about the internet is that your bait will eventually leave your bubble, and when it does, it will reach the average media illiterate person. Oh. It's just, I don't know, man. I don't know how fucking easy it is to just, like, hook people on this. I don't know why it's so easy. And, and for me, it's like, this kind of shit sucks. And then the other version of this, it's not a funny joke. No, it is. It is funny. It's funny to think about how like Mr. Beast armed Hamas. Like that is, uh, that premise is a funny premise. I will want. I've made jokes like that. What are you talking about? The point is, why the absolute fuck are people just like looking at this and thinking of it anything as anything beyond just like someone making a joke? I don't understand it. I will never understand it. As a matter of fact, I just I I don't get it. I don't know what like urges people to be like, huh. This must be serious. Now, this might be a, I mean, this is not a, like a, like a Twitter blue operation to fucking farm, uh, to, to farm revenue, but there is the version of that, that I would say is significantly more damaging the discourse. And it's just like deliberate misinformation spreading, deliberate hate spreading. People do this shit all the time. Okay. So. What do I mean by that? There's the the fucking accounts that uh I didn't watch the Dream video, but Dream like made a fucking massive like 
here is me defending myself against all of the controversy and people hating on me and like you know smearing me with false uh stuff video right and in that video as far as i understand he made like two fake dms to show how easy it is to manipulate right he made two fake dms to show how easy it is to manipulate people into thinking like this is an authentic genuine uh text message that was uncovered by the internet and also like Snapchat posts and shit too, because I think that's what he's uh, claiming that people were doing. Uh, people, he was claiming that people were like faking um, his Snapchat or some shit like that. And what did people do on Twitter? They fucking literally either willingly or unwillingly in an effort to ultimately generate as much revenue as possible for themselves took the fucking screenshot from the dream video about Pokimane, which is a made-up screenshot, right? And immediately farmed it with like 51K fucking view, like 51K likes, 7.6 million fucking impressions. Pokimane really just admitted she scammed y'all with her $28 cookies. Hey, I hope you're doing well. I'm launching my first ever product, whatever, you know. And then the next is... They're just some stupid cookies I repackaged and I'm selling it like 10x the price, but my fans are stupid as fuck crying, so they'll buy them anyway. They taste pretty good at least, smile. Time to get rich off stupid little girls and simps again. And the only reason why motherfuckers... And some motherfuckers didn't even post it from like Dream's video. Some motherfuckers just straight up posted it as though it was a DM that they found. And, and all of these tweets got like fucking, you know, 50K, 50K likes... 80k likes and the thing is like obviously this is like low effort shit but yeah it's accounts like this motherfucker and and all of the fucking twitter impression farmers that absolutely do this shit all the time and it's not just for pokemon they do it to me all the fucking time too like it's just like, people just do it specifically because they know, like, you know, Twitter has become 4chan. It's become Gab. There are people that are, like, permanent villains on the platform, right? There are people that are permanent villains on the platform. So if you fucking shit on them, no matter what, if you just, like, you know, falsely smear somebody. Dream, ironically, is, is one of those people, too, okay? It just doesn't matter. Everyone will, everyone will upvote it. And that, for the most part, is specifically done so that these guys can generate revenue for themselves. And Elon Musk is, you know, directly giving cash to people for doing this shit. While simultaneously talking about if you get too many community notes, like, you won't be able to get paid out. And it's bullshit. That part is also bullshit, too. It's become this like reactionary farming operation where Elon Musk is basically giving these little kids who run these fucking Twitter accounts money to specifically pump out reactionary bullshit, even if they don't personally believe it. Because half the time, the dudes that are posting stuff like that, they don't fucking hate Pokemon. They don't hate me. They don't hate fucking anybody. They don't give a shit at all. They just simply care about making money off of posts. And the reality is like, yeah, if you're... If you're like a 17, 18 year old, right? And you want to make like a couple thousand dollars. Um, you have two options. You go on Twitter and you do post a 10th photo on your camera roll as a, as a chatter uh, pointed out. And then that's one way of getting engagement bait. The other one is also uh, setting up an account where you just like copy paste Wikipedia pages or chat GPT uh, certain like spooky stories or whatever. And then slap on like a questionable image on top of it. And then this is the other one. This is the, this is the you know, classic person that they hate. Oh, they 100% hate you, dude. You have no idea how much people genuinely despise you online. Jesus Christ, dude. Like, Kira and Juju alike post you in farm impressions, likes, and comments about how you don't know what you're talking about. All you do is yell if someone contradicts you and you only have a following because you're an attractive liberal. Exactly. Those motherfuckers, 1,000%. Did not develop these opinions organically. They saw other people saying this kind of shit, so they're just repeating it. 
if you go back far enough in time, you'll probably find them fucking posting about how they were watching at the time when it was popular. You know what I mean? In 2020, they were probably in the chat. You know what I mean? The point of that is absolutely, the point of that is is absolutely not about like real political convictions or anything like that. It's just like, oh, there are a lot of people that hate this motherfucker and they will give me a big boost if I, if I uh, say this motherfucker sucks. Okay. Anyway, it's not about like drama anyway. I don't even hate these guys. Okay. I, I don't personally care. I definitely despise Elon Musk though. Um, Sam Cedar, what a fucking nightmare. Thank you, Majority Report. Well, this is the, the Emma, the Emma Majority uh, Report day today. So, uh, shouts out to Emma and the Majority Report people. They should all pose more about Epic Mickey too. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just, uh, people respond to, uh, people respond to certain influences. The other part of this I hate when Hasanabi gets stuck on the shit Twitch slash Twitter drama. My friend, this is, this is a much broader conversation that I'm trying to have. And the other example, the last example I'm going to use on this is because this is online media literacy. Basically, this is not just about, this is not just about like, Oh, people are yelling at others on Twitter. Okay. This is more so about online media literacy because the last, or perhaps uh, one of the, the real reasons why I wanted to talk about this issue was someone who normally doesn't shitpost, but engaged in shitposting. That someone is friend of the show, Osida Nuanevu, the contributing editor to New Republic, a columnist for The Guardian, someone who has been on this show quite a bit. I love his analysis. I think he's brilliant. I think he's very smart. Osita made the mistake of making a joke. Okay? And then everybody lost their fucking minds over it. The original post was somewhere along the lines of... Where is it? It's not clear where Marx laid out socialism is like a never-ending Black Friday sale. Uh, yeah, he he posted something. Where's the original post? Where the fuck is it? I, I, I brought this up before. I brought this up uh, when he first posted it because I responded to it and everyone yelled at me as well. But Osita basically said something along the lines of, of like, if you... What the fuck is a Twitchy? I don't even know what this is. I guess this is like a fake AI... Website. Oh, here it is. Fundamentally, socialism is about buying affordable consumer products. He responded to this not Jerome Powell account, smashing capitalism with a $12 Starbucks, $200 Ray-Bans, and $1,500 MacBook, right? This is fundamentally wrong. This is a ridiculous thing. It is not at odds with socialism at all. Everybody knows socialism is avoiding the top of the hour ad break by subscribing for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. That's what socialism is actually about, right? Like everybody knows that. Socialism is not about smashing capitals with a $12 Starbucks, $200 Ray-Bans. It's about not watching the ads at the top of the fucking hour. Here's a three-minute ad break now, by the way. Coming to you. Too early? It's 5.56, 11.56. That's valid. Here's a three-minute ad break now. Okay, so... Osita, understandably, quote-tweeted this and was mocking it. Saying, fundamentally, socialism is about buying affordable consumer products. Are you an Android user? That's socialism. Do you have a Dell? That's socialism. Shop at H&M? That's socialism. The more expensive your stuff is, the more capitalist it is. Marx lays this out in capital. Now, of course, for those of you who are painfully unaware of what jokes are, this is the classic Hasanabi describes what a joke is to people our, okay, including the guy, the person who wrote this fucking dumbass article. This is a joke. This is not a real thing. This is the exact opposite, as a matter of fact. He is making a joke about how stupid this person is. Another one of these, like, idiotic fucking rage bait, you know, impression farming accounts with a blue check mark 
that tries to desperately crack these fucking jokes so they can ultimately make money, okay? Classic socialism, lol. Imagine being a socialist on an iPhone. It's the most idiotic thing you can say. It's not real analysis. It's not real commentary at all. And it's like, yeah, rent rent is do ass tweets is exactly what this is. It's like, oh, let me fucking pop this off. Maybe I can get a hundred dollars, so you know I can I can buy myself something nice. Is is Christmas? Maybe buy it for my family members or something. That's what this is. Okay. So he makes a joke about it. He says that's not what socialism is about by saying the exact opposite. And then all hell broke loose. He continued to joke about it. And and of course there are there were a shit ton of leftists who got mad at him too. There were a shit ton of dumbass right wingers. I've never read a less comprehensible tweet than this. There's so much to pick apart. First, uh, what makes any of that affordable compared to uh, what? Second, I'm confident you don't know what socialism is. It's just like, like a lot of people just wanted to get a slam dunk off on them because they were like, oh, you're an idiot. No, he doesn't know what socialism is. He knows what he thinks socialism is, and he's wrong about that. And and I'm sure even there were probably, you know, possibly heads at the periphery that don't fucking understand jokes that thought that this was real. What you're describing is competition in a free market. There are vast differences in quality and other factors related to products and services. Please cite the page of Das Kapital where Marx says the price differ- differences differentiate capitalism from socialism. He doesn't. And for me, what, I, what my takeaway from this, including Jonathan fucking Turley, okay? Jonathan Turley who goes on Fox News all the goddamn time, wrote a fucking article about Osita's shit post. Thank you for the 9.29. These people have to be fucking CI operators or something. There's no way this, they're this stupid. No. Dude, they're not. They're not. These people are operating on two different, there's two different things. One, people are primed to despise socialism and not know what it is due to Red Scare propaganda. That's fine. That's like a basic principle, right? That's always out there. The other the other thing here is that people are also primed to dunk on one another and get and there's nothing better than an easy dunk. There's nothing better than a fucking easy ass dunk. It's right there for the taking. It's the pie on the window still, you know? So that's precisely the reason why people do it. They do it from the left, they do it from the right, and people on the left just don't have any understanding of what socialism is either. And for the most part, they also don't know what a joke is. Okay? And then you have the the dummies who are trying to do the fucking dunk, which is this guy. You know, he's just like, oh, this is an easy-ass dunk. Let's make fun of this guy. Osita then followed this up by sa- and by saying, they should make a test where you assess the sincerity of posts. For those who have trouble telling, I'm being serious this time. We really should be studying the way irony functions on the internet formally. I'm sure folks are on it already. It's like a glue trap. It goes on forever. In the early 20th century, Marx has predicted socialism would outpace capitalism. By the middle 20th century, it was clear that that wasn't happening, so they decided capitalism overproduced. By the early 21st century, it was clear that wasn't happening, so they just pretend socialism produced things. People going, um, that's, I mean, or socialism is just capitalism now. Social media is built for Duncan. Ratios, QRTs, character limits is perfect for being snarky and it broke everyone's brains. Exactly. No, absolutely. Did we have tone indicators some time ago? People dunked on that, but honestly, we should bring them back. No, I've always been an advocate for tone indicators. I sometimes use them, uh, obviously, but like, guys... I'm delivering information to you on a medium where I don't have to give you tone indicators 
and you motherfuckers are in bad faith all the time in, in the way that you analyze what I have to say. So it's not just tone indicators either. There's some about people's brains that are just like broken. I'm not, I'm not writing out what I'm saying. I'm not writing out my commentary, and yet for some reason people still have a hard time understanding what the fuck's going on. On Twitter, however, when you're writing, yes, tone indicators are great. But the point is, even if you don't have tone indicators on, okay, which for the record, like I said, I am pro tone, uh, tone indicators. I think it's good because of the way that people, uh, because of the way that the medium works posting, it's good to offer a tone indicator. It's not even just for like, you know, people with disabilities. The guy yesterday couldn't catch any joke. Yeah, I mean, he was also kind of drunk, I think. But had to dig around to establish that Ranty Amy Curtis was a real person to begin with. Hard to tell with articles like this, especially with AI these days. They should make a test for that, too. It's page 420 of the Penguin Classics Edition, Volume 1. Also exerted in the Marx Engels reader as why you should only own cheap things. I'm not as clever as you are, so I had to copy a dude's response to your unique take on what socialism is. I personally don't like looking stupid in front of a lot of people, so I'd have to keep that idiot to, idiocy to myself. But hey, UBU, please cite the page of Das Kapital where Marx says the price difference, differences differentiate capitalism from socialism. In parentheses, he doesn't. Anyway, this is like a... This is a, this is a good one because like the young schizzarella or whatever... She is a shit poster. She shit posts all the fucking time with great frequency. So, uh, you know, people get people get caught up in that uh and it's just like ridiculous. How whatever her name is, I don't know what her name is. But with Osita, he doesn't usually shit post. And yet people still have this kind of reaction. Even though he's like very clearly fucking replying to a tweet making fun of the idiocy within the tweet. One thing that's been illuminating about this episode has been seeing how many ostensibly ordinary people are ready to drop the very same lines from ISI, heritage, etc. at the drop of a hat whenever they even see the word socialism. Pure reflex is really something. But anyway, for the most part, people that were shitting on Osita weren't like actual socialists or whatever. The people shitting on Osita for the most part were unironic right-wing, uh, uh, you know, capitalism defenders that were saying, like, uh, actually, you just described capitalism, sweetie. But, yeah, I digress. Just wanted to do my uh, classic intro into the fucking discourse. Uh, our brains are getting permanently broken. I guess you just kind of keep shit boasting regardless. Um, here's a TikTok cringe video that went uh, and popped off, I guess. Congo? is capitalist. The Congo is one of the poorest countries in the world. The Congo, though, is mineral rich. So much cobalt. Every single one of your folds needs cobalt to work. That is your real life vibranium. Capitalism has not helped the Congo. The disorder within the country benefits the capitalists at home. Because it is infinitely more favorable to the first world nations. Global South never actually developed so we could extract their natural resources, which we still continue to do so through trade relationships and the World Bank and the IMF. That is the economic dominance that we subject upon them. When you say they're capitalist, what do you mean that the Congo is capitalist? Well, you that's where the colonial entities were historically. What the fuck? Why did those countries not develop? What happened? Is it because they were just like stupid? Is it because they're inferior genetically? Or is it because we prevented them from developing? You know who the new colonizers are? China. Oh Who's my God. He's so stupid. Ty, you are so dumb, dog. Literally, oh my God, bro. That's awesome. You know who the real colonizers, the new colonizers are? China, bro. These Africans, they don't know any better. Instead of getting the good IMF loans, they're too stupid and went to the Chinese guys for more favorable loans they think are more favorable, but secretly they're not. Knowledge. Dubai, you see it there. Moving into Africa. 
China is not America. There are clear differences in what that. America does in the Congo versus what China does. America comes in, they set up military bases. Unmarked airplanes will come into the Congo with multitudes of American military and multiple corporations. You know what China does? They come in with intellectuals, with a document signing. Would you guys like to do this trade deal? If you do this, we'll build a mining facility that the state can run and that will benefit your taxes. And you know what the Congo will say? They'll say no. And you know what China will do? They make a new deal. You know what happens when you say no to America? <laughs> and how does that happen in the law? So read Lenin. That's it. A lot of this would be solved if they just simply read Lenin. She keeps saying, what does imperialism have to do with capitalism? And imperialism is a necessity under capitalism. If you want to implement a global capitalist structure, it's basically the same principle behind permanent underclass existing in, in domestic production, but defined on a global scale. Capitalism necessitates imperialism. Some say, not me, is the highest state of capitalism. Why is this on TikTok cringe? And how did this get so many uploads? That's kind of crazy. That's like surprising. You need to recommend me more books. I just finished Jakarta Method. Amazing. <sighs> TikTok cringe as fuck. Finding the bad comment. No, I mean, this is great. I'm glad that they posted this and I'm glad that people are appreciating it. But. TikTok cringe is good TikTok stuff now, no longer cringe. Yeah. Anyway, but of course, I, I uh, was talking about Chinese loans versus American ones, and, and therefore it's on Reddit. I'm sure it'll be like, I'm sure it'll turn into uh, how dare they, how dare you fucking say uh, China comparably offers better loans. Oh, one other thing. This was uh, fun to see. Um, Hassan Air Productions posted Twitch streamer Hassan has helped raise over $2.8 million for charity in 2023 alone is by far the most of any streamer on the platform which I don't know if it's true or not I don't think that's true but I mean he said that and then I saw this you guys sent this to me as well this morning Allah bless him says Robin Monkey D. Robin but can someone tell me why the internet hates this guy I've only started following him recently because of his engagement for Palestine, but before that, I always only heard bad things about him. Surely you can't be that bad of a man if you use your platform like that. And then the replies were actually kind of good for the most part. Like, it was good shit. Reddit outside of areas filled with their haters is getting more anti-capitalist by the day. Yeah. It was, like, pretty good. And then, of course, you have the classic, like, watch this video. It will answer many of the questions of the clips with problematic behavior. <laughs> it did not answer any questions. At best, this video is incredibly shallow. So then this person writes this. Now, I, I suspect you have to be, like, I suspect that when you, when you do this, like, I hope normal people look at this and go, oh, my God, this is the most insane person of all time, except this is how my haters operate. This is how they fucking move, dog. I don't know if they're doing crack cocaine or I don't know if they're doing meth. This is like what you encounter in every space where you bring up my fucking name, which is crazy. Donate 2.8 million, but lives in a $2.7 billion home. Get your money on Bozo. Yeah, it has to be meth, right? I used to be a fan of Hassan long ago. I started to notice how he preached one thing and then did another. I found he lied about his entire past and wasn't able to take any criticism, as all, criticism at all. If he's ever confronted even by his fans, he has a total meltdown like a four-year, four-year-old child. It is hard to get news when it is so based around hating America, loving Russia, and hating Israel. I'm not even talking... I am not talking about being pro-Palestine, as I am, but he can't understand that there were victims on both sides. <laughs> like, this is... What an opener. Not a single part of this is correct. I've never lied about my past. Like, ever. I've, if anything, I've overshared. I've overshared too much. Loving Russia is also another hilarious fucking thing. Okay? His commentary is only based around hating America. This is literally a person who claims to be a liberal speaking exactly in the same way that Steven Crowder does. But we have gotten as far as, as far as liberalism goes in the United States of America, 
so many liberals, whenever they see like anyone that is actually a leftist, an anti-capitalist or socialist, or even a fucking sock them for the most part, they literally hit the motherfucking Steven Crowder button so hard, bro. Okay? I'm sorry. If this person didn't signal to the rest of the world as though they are actually, you know, somewhat of a left-leaning person, it is indecipherable. What they're saying is indistinguishable from what Steven Crowder would be saying. His entire commentary revolves around hating America. Here, I'll read it in that voice so that people understand, okay? He's transphobic, racist, cop-hating, misogynistic, and racist cop-hating. He's a cop-hater. What the fuck? Transphobic, which is, you know, when, when Republicans also cynically will go, oh, he's actually the real transphobe, not me. Misogynistic and an admitted propagandist. He also panders to his audience, which they seem to like. However, I didn't, get, I didn't like to get the news from whatever point of view his audience takes, which is not genuine news to me. If that's your cup of tea, then he's your man. Some people like him. I happen to be disgusted by any hypocritical socialist grifters. He does this for money and nothing else. Before he became a proclaimed socialist, he was acting as the red-pilled right-wing alpha male because it wasn't making him money. He copied his uncle's left-wing politics model. Literally not true. As he had built an audience, as his uncle is Jank of Young Turks, which I surpassed for some reason. I don't know how that happened, but... I would recommend Jank. I first found out Hassan because of his uncle Jank mentioning him over Hassan any day. I like to watch Jank and Destiny. I found Destiny because Hassan would talk so much trash about him. When have I ever done that? There is like probably in the last four years, there's like three fucking moments that I've brought it up. That's it. So I was curious to see who this degenerate was. I watched a debate of his, and I like this coverage, research, and debate in politics. It's like, dude, this is so much work that you are doing for free, okay? This level of dick riding should probably be illegal. Like, you are presenting yourself as, like, a random onlooker. You're key-searching Hassan online. You're presenting yourself as a random onlooker to be, like, to write a fucking Wikipedia page of just falsehoods. To then go, yeah, you should go watch this guy instead. It's crazy to me. Then I looked in the fallout between the two and found Hassan lied. I'm tired of the grown man yelling at his meltdowns. I couldn't stand his man's very fragile ego anymore. And he continued his behavior onto another podcast. He was the co-host. Leftovers is a whole different story. But Hassan was ultimately fired after totally screwing over the host. <laughs> What is happening? I would just check out other political streamers for more factual information. I don't suggest Vosh blatantly lies too, but Jank, Dylon Burns, Destiny, and Loner Box are some good ones. The list is too long to list everything, but there are so many videos that have covered him. Hassan is fine to watch for entertainment as he can be funny. Just beware of his politics and know that he's not a real socialist. And it's like, are, are you a real socialist? Like, what's happening? Someone cared enough to ask the question, genius. All criticisms I have about a song can be backed up with videos. <laughs> and it's literally just, hey, by the way, these criticisms I have of him, please watch YouTube videos made by fucking random drama farmers and you will be able to make your own mind. I don't know what else to say. I mean, other than she did call me entertaining and funny, <laughs> but warned others of the dangers. But yeah. Hypocrisy baiting can be done on everyone. Come on, this is dumb as fuck. No, it, it, but it's not even hypocritical. There's no real, like, there's no real hypocrisy that they're pointing to. To me, though, the reason why I brought this up is because, like, it is fucking insane that anytime someone's like, why do people hate this guy? There's a person out there ready to write an entire Wikipedia page. There's, like, a pastebin out there of, like, all of the talking points you can use to, like, get people to not watch me. That's fucking insane. That's not normal. And I don't know 
if people recognize that, I think like when I say this, when it's coming out of my mouth and they hear this recognition, they think, oh, we got them. Like, I'm saying this specifically because like, this is an obsession. You're not actually like fighting a real battle. You know what I mean? She told one lie while writing an essay. Damn, only one lie told in this article. Yeah, the, the one lie is that I'm funny, right? Is that what you're going to say? Got it. Fucking got me, dude. Got my ass good. Straight up. But yeah, there's a shit ton of uh, positive comments underneath it. This is what I mean by people utterly despising you online. Brother, this is what I mean by most people online would be very different in the real world and the reception to them would be very different in the real world. This is precisely what I'm talking about when I say the under the guise of anonymity, people can like kind of make themselves seem reasonable. Right? Yeah. Explain any of this shit to a fucking bus driver. Okay. Explain any of that to a, uh, to a normal person. Like, for me, when I see something that long, I'm like, this is such a major overreaction. And when I see where a lot of this comes from, I, I, I just hope that they get better. You know what I mean? I do. An IRL, friend, uh, an IRL friend found out I watched a stream and watched some other streamer that doesn't like you, and for days were sending paragraphs in Messenger. I had to block them because they wouldn't fucking stop. <laughs> That's insane. It's not like, like for me, a lot of the people that fucking do that back in the day used to be just like straight conservatives, right? It, that meant like someone was like a Ben Shapiro fan or something. I don't even do this level of like going nutty mode. If I found, if I find out someone is like a fan of Tim Pool and like I am ideologically on the opposite side with Tim Pool, I don't present myself as like, a fucking conservative who then is like saying Temple's a fake conservative or whatever, right? A lot of the dudes on the supposedly liberal side present themselves as progressives. So it has to, at a certain point, make you really consider like, are these guys really progressive? Are they actually liberals? Are they really progressives? Do they really care about progressive values? Anyway. So... They're literally supporting genocide right now. Of course, they aren't progressives. I know. And it's like half the time, the source is like drama baiting YouTuber. But overall, overall, it is like unironically. I mean, it's just like a, like a level of derangement that I think. Please read. Did you read the thread that spawned off my comment? Not trying to get self promo, but there was a dude basically talked down off a ledge with another chatter. They seem to be lonely more than anything. I think a lot of, I think a lot of people are just lonely more than anything. He's the biggest socialist commentator and an online figure. He's constantly the target of smear and harassment by everyone from jealous and envious leftists who aren't as successful but advertise their patreons the literal Nazis. Um, and they hyper focus on his bad takes out when his optics are bad, similar to other creators in that sphere. He's just the biggest one there. Yeah, I don't think it's it's that. I think it's mostly. I think it mostly stems from like, if you don't know anything. Uh, about me which is fine of course you're not going to know who has the fucking time to to learn and uh you don't understand what it's like when you're fucking uh you know when when someone is is uh live for 10 hours a day speaking <sighs> you're gonna get a lot of uh you're gonna get like a like a quick cursory uh, intro into what the fuck's going on with this dude. And if most of that is like negative, easy clipped moments, you're not going to think about it any further. You're just going to be, Oh, this guy seems like he sucks. You can literally, you can literally present me as a transphobic person, which many people do. Right. Which is the funniest one out of all of them. Right. And, and that shit like pops off. That shit pops off in leftist spaces too. And right wingers know that, which is why, uh, which is why they do it. Which is why, like a lot of people with reactionary takes, will do that. 
Okay? They'll do that deliberately. Because if I had sponsors, they would go after my fucking sponsors. But because I don't have sponsors, the only people that they can go after are my fans. How do you go after my fans? Yeah, if you say I hate cops, my fans are going to be like, okay, I don't give a shit about that. But if you say I'm transphobic and you can, like, try to find a fucking, you know, deep fried clip completely fucking out of context, like, without devoid of any understanding of the relationship that I have with that specific chatter or anything at all, uh, yeah, you can do that. You can do that for anybody. But ultimately, I do hope that people will see through that. I do hope that people have the capacity to cut through that noise and maintain charitability. Um, the simple thing, of course, is, is, you know, if I wanted to be a grifter, I would just grift to the right. It's infinitely better paying. You don't have to be all that good. You being transphobic is so laughable to actual transpho- trans people have it as a joke pinned on their profile. Yeah, that's the other part. Like, me being transphobic is is literally, like, a fucking meme. There's a couple different reasons why people... Your problem is you think you're always right. You just do your grift, quit bitching. <laughs> Uh, true. I'm going to keep grifting with positions that are uh, incredibly unpopular with the broadest sex of the internet. Anyway, I think this is another byproduct of being hyper alienated, not having any fucking real uh, manageable relationships, not look, not having anything to look forward to in the real world. So you find yourself desperately seeking a sense of community and a sense of purpose and what better purpose is out there than to fucking take down this villain right like we got to do that and then um when you when you tack on like morality to your mania when you tack on morality to your mania it gives you a secondary purpose like you're not just simply cyber stalking some fucking dude that that you don't like because he yelled at you or because he banned you from his chat. Now you're doing it because this guy's a villain and you got to take this villain down. Right. But it's pretty funny. Overall, it's funny. And I uh, hope that if you are in any of these, uh, if you're in any of these hater circles and you're in here to like find fucking new clips or whatever, I wish you well. I do legitimately one, obviously I'm self-interested that you stop, but two, want you to stop for your own benefit. Getting out of these communities, which are operate in cult like ways, really will actually improve your mental health. Your community has some of the best and also most annoying people. I know. It happens. I think developing a hobby that improves your life would probably be better. I'm in a hater circle. We take down Twitch streamers with drip. (laughs) I don't know what that means. But my point is, my point is, it's not a very healthy hobby to constantly be in a fucking group chat with a bunch of other people where you think you're like lol cowing someone. And it doesn't even have to be me. It's anyone really. When you're doing stuff like that, it's, it's legitimately not coming out of a place of like mental sanity. You know what I mean? I promise. I promise. I'm not saying that simply because, you know, I, I'm sick and tired of the harassment. Obviously, there is a, a level of self-interest that I will willingly admit, but it also is not good for your mental health. And you don't want to be there. You don't want that. I promise you don't want that for your life. Hassan, you know they aren't good people? I don't believe that. I don't believe that at all. 
No. I don't believe that at all. I think everyone has the capacity to be good. I always will believe that. I will continue fucking pushing for that. If that wasn't the case, if I didn't believe in rehabilitation, if I didn't believe in people's capacity to change, I wouldn't be doing I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing, okay? When I started this fucking journey on Twitch, that was one of my major that was one of my major fucking points of view, even with Destiny, who was like a libertarian shitlord early on, who I thought was like an actual progressive that had reformed. You know what I mean? Why do you think I fucking developed a friendship? Everyone always likes to talk about like, oh, you ate his clout or whatever, but it's not the real reason. That, that certainly helped, something that I gave him props for regularly, okay? But it was because, just like with Ethan, who I know and believe is someone who who made a change for the better in his own personal politics just like with ian idubs and many others people have the capacity to change people have the capacity to reform people have the capacity to learn more open their minds to different perspectives that's it not when it came to israel though oh god it doesn't matter like People are complex, okay? You are you guys also do legitimately jump on one thing and like hyper-focus on it and stay on it. I, I said this time and time again through, uh, to, throughout this entire process. Anyway. And like... Another example I'll use is, regardless of his uh, uncharitability towards me, regardless of his perspective of, like, using me as a, as a fucking person to yell at all the time to, like, galvanize his base or to reshift the narrative over to, like, look, Hassan is bad, though, right? XQC is a person who has also demonstrated change in his life in, in certain moments, right? And I've defended that, too. If there's someone out there who used to say like fucking shitty things and is no longer saying them and knows that they're bad, then I'm always going to fucking be there for them. Even if I don't agree with them, even if they're fucking uncharitable and unkind to me. Okay. That's it. That's it. All right. Now let's talk about Prague turning into America. We continue to follow breaking news out of the Czech Republic's <laughs> capital city of Prague. That's right. Authorities confirming a gunman has killed at least 15 people and injured dozens of others at a university. Police are also confirming that the suspected gunman is dead. The shooting was at Charles University, which is located in a square in the city's downtown area. Now, that area has been evacuated and sealed off. Police have yet to give specific information about the victims and the precise circumstances of the shooting. Let's find out more now from our CBS News correspondent, Elaine Cobb. Elaine, walk us through what we do know as of this moment before police fill us in on exactly what happened. Well, Errol, the police chief has, in fact, just said that 15 people are dead. So the death toll has gone up from that initial figure. So 15 people killed in this shooting spree. And it happened at the university in central Prague. And the police also say that they believe the shooter was a student of the arts faculty there. Um, students and teachers hid where they could on the campus the philosophy department was evacuated there were war uh, is this photo for real i think i mean i saw it being circulated online of like students like uh getting outside and hiding and for the chatters asking like why is this global news the reason why it's global news is because uh, this doesn't happen, okay? This this happens in America all the time. This doesn't happen in other places. 
warnings going out and a lot of students on social media saying we're hiding, we're barricaded inside, we don't know what's going on. Others spoke about getting off the tram just beside the university and suddenly hearing shooting, unaware of what might be happening. And don't forget that in this pre-Christmas season, Prague is a huge tourism destination because it's famous for its Christmas markets. And so potentially a lot of people around and a lot of people worried about what's happening as it's been evacuated. But the police have confirmed that the shooter was killed. And Elaine, we're now hearing that Reuters is reporting as well that the shooter's father was also found dead. Obviously, this is breaking news. There's a lot to still figure out. In the meantime, tell us about the area where police are responding. Well, the Charles University is in the center of uh, Prague, the capital of the Czech Republic, and it is part of the old town. People spoke about hearing um, uh, shooting right in the center, seeing someone firing towards the bridge. One eyewitness said he saw a man with a large weapon firing and then he dropped the weapon to the ground beside that central bridge. Now, it leads to the old town, which is a huge, hugely popular tourist area. And of course, Prague is a big university town as well. So there are always students around and it's coming up to the end of classes before the Christmas break. So there there would have been a lot of people around finishing up, wrapping up their studies before they head away, or partying, preparing to party for the weekend. And so this is something that is going to uh, give them a, a big shock. And Ch the Czech Republic is not used to shootings. There have been two yeah. mass shootings in the last uh, 10 years, just to give you an idea of how rare it is. Well, Elaine, I want to follow up on that because as we watch this breaking news unfold from, from the States, you know, mass shootings here are just all too common. They happen here more frequently than any, anywhere else in the world. But from what you've just said, only two shootings like this in the Czech Republic in the past decade suggest that this is... Oh, my God, I'm fucking muted. God damn it. From an American point of view, from an American point of view... The crazy part isn't that a mass shooting happened. The crazy part is that a mass shooting is that rare. That's the wild part. That's why the CBS news anchor is like, wow. It's crazy how rare this is. It's incredible. Once every, once every two years, well, unimaginable. Unimaginable. U.S. two mass shootings an hour. It's like, yeah, we got fucking, it's like, Two, I thought they said two every 10 years. No, that's what I'm saying. It happened twice in a decade. It's like once, a, once every five years is crazy. This is an extremely rare occurrence and, and even that more jarring for people there. Absolutely. And with the time of year, it's something that comes as a shock. People are preparing for Christmas festivities. They're buying presents. Fun fact, Czechia has the most liberal gun laws in Europe. Uh... Uh, very similar to the ones in the U.S.? I doubt it. There is 0% chance that any country on the European continent has as loose gun laws as the United States of America. Switzerland has the most guns per capita in Europe, and yet Switzerland, and by the way, I've talked about this quite a bit before the fucking Johnny Harris video, all you Johnny Harris watchers out there who are going to come in here and like try to spit fucking facts at me. Yes, something that I've talked about quite a bit is that Switzerland has the most guns per capita in Europe, okay? However, however, their gun laws are incredibly strict, and understandably so. As far as the Czech Republic goes, I highly doubt, I highly doubt that they don't have gun laws in the same way that you, we don't have gun laws here in the United States of America, where you can just like go to whatever the fucking Czech Walmart is, Okay, well, the martel, and then fucking go and buy an AR-15. It, there's no shot. Whatever, whatever they have in, in in Czech Republic, like fucking Tesco, Aldi, whatever, you know. So you have to remember that one million guns for ten million ish population is high, but you have to remember, you have to remember something. First of all, 
United States of America has more guns than people. So that's one. More guns in circulation than fucking people. Number two, the United States of America doesn't just have a lot of guns. They also have no restrictions whatsoever. You're out of your mind. There's no other developed nation on the fucking planet that has that plays as fast and loose with a weapon that is built specifically to kill people, especially versions of said weapon that is specifically designed to kill multiple people with ease. That's not a thing, guys, okay? No, that's not a thing. Plenty of places around the planet, in, in many countries, you can shoot a gun. You can even acquire a gun. But there are severe restrictions involved, understandable regulations involved with the maintenance of a, uh, of a gun license to be able to go and get a gun. That's crazy. Okay? To think that, like, it would be anywhere near America's level of fucking mania is psychotic and wrong. They're going to the Christmas markets that are so famous in Prague. And all the students would have been preparing to... Anyway, here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip it over to BBC. Turn I want to hear their perspective. That's breaking news story from the Czech Republic. Authorities I there say that quick. more than 15 people have been killed after... Shut your ass up. Bet you have armed security. Says gun slinger 04. First of all, I got my fucking bare arms right here, bitch boy. Let me tell you something, okay? Hey! Let me tell you something. An armed society is a polite society, motherfucker. Don't fucking come at me with this shit. That's number one. Number two. I never said you shouldn't be able to have a gun, you dumb fuck. I'm simply stating that guns are very fucking dangerous, okay? They're very fucking dangerous. And you shouldn't be waving them around willy-nilly. Do you understand what I'm saying? Guns are very fucking dangerous. You cannot just go out and fucking purchase a firearm. Okay? You need a license. At the very least, our way of being able to acquire a weapon should resemble the way that we fucking get a driver's license. Actually fucking bullshit. That we don't have that. That's crazy to me. You need at least... Character witnesses that could be held liable. You need a psych assessment. And on top of that, you need to be able to demonstrate that you know how to fucking shoot it and you know how to maintain it and you know proper safety measures. And if you fail that test, you can't have a license. You have to try again. And those licenses you have to renew. Okay? It's absolutely crazy to me that we don't even have that shit. Your argument sounds more compelling when you're waving the handgun. Thank, yeah, exactly, dude. Exactly. Honestly, it should be harder to both get a driver's license as well as a gun. Fine. For a shooting at a university in Prague. Many others were injured, some seriously. We believe the number of injured now stands at around 24. Well, police say the shooter's body was also found at the scene by police. Let's take you live now to the latest. Darkness uh, is well and truly, uh, has well and truly fallen on Prague, but the police are still very much out in force. And our journalist who is there told us that many areas around the university are still uh, cordoned off by police uh, who are advising people to stay away. At a press conference earlier, police confirmed the shooter was a student at the university's Faculty of Arts at Charles University, where the incident happened. Um, now, the university is near uh, a very famous uh, tourist site, the 14th century Charles Bridge. It's at the heart of historic Prague, just a stone's throw from the old town square. Uh, now, Prague, as we know, is very popular with tourists throughout the year, but it's the Christmas markets and the Christmas season 
where it really sees the number of tourists uh, increasing. And we spoke to uh, a few people earlier on in the program who were there on holiday. Uh, the BBC have also spoken to a couple who were in Prague on their honeymoon who said that they were told by police to get down and to get away as quickly as possible. Now, when the event happened, police evacuated the building and they warned the people around the area, the Jan Palak Square, uh, to stay away. Uh, now, the Interior Minister has been speaking. He's been uh, reassuring people that this there is no imminent danger anymore and that this is not connected to international terrorism in any way. The Czech president, Peter Pavel, has expressed his shock and sent his condolences. And the Czech prime minister has said that all future events have been cancelled in light of these tragic events. Uh, we know that this shooting is the biggest mass shooting seen in modern Czech history. There was a gun attack back in 2019, uh, which killed four men and two women. That time, a man opened fire at a trauma clinic waiting room in another part of the Czech Republic. Uh, but since then, nothing this, of this size or anywhere near this size has happened. And gun crime in the Czech Republic are very, very rare indeed. I've been speaking to a number of journalists and they have all confirmed this. So... Chart showing support of various gun control measures, all supported by majority. Only NRA slash Republicans stop them. How to prevent gun deaths where experts in the public agree. Yeah. Um, there are incredibly broad, very popular support for a shit ton of gun safety measures. The problem is, however, the problem is, however, we can't pass any of them. We can't pass a single one. And it's not necessarily just because of the fucking NRA, okay? It's not just the NRA. The NRA is simply an expression of, like, how fucking uh, hog-like the American uh, population is, okay? But as we found out with abortion restrictions, popularity of an idea or how sound it is doesn't necessarily matter all too much to those in fucking power, which is ironic because motherfuckers love talking about guns because they're going to use it against tyrannical oppressors. Okay? They love being like, oh, I got to have my gun because otherwise how else can I thwart a tyrannical dictatorship when it fucking happens? And then they don't even recognize that we are under that oppressive structure right now, dumb fuck. The point is, we don't have a fucking real democratic process on anything. All it takes is a couple goddamn Republicans to be like, yeah, no, I'm not doing that. Suck my dick. Okay? That's it. That's literally it. Huh. Isn't that the reason why January 6th happened, though? What? I don't, I don't know what you mean by that, but it is pretty funny to think that, like, January 6th happened because, uh, you know, Americans rose up against an oppressive dictatorship. What if gun owners had to pass a test? Czech Republic offers an answer. <coughs> so, he, uh, the, in the Czech Republic, you have 30 multiple choice questions, 40 minutes, how to properly mark X on the answer sheet, then you order phones away, only pen and paper. In the Czech Republic, this is part of how you obtain a gun. The test had all the tedious marks of a high school exam down to the motivational poster on the wall saying, I will. And for 40 minutes, three of mine had already failed, ushered out the door as others went on to later stages in the exam in which they had to prove the ability to handle the weapon safely and shoot accurately. As one of the other aspects. The test, personally, is what you need. Czech lawmakers and gun owners say this national system dramatically increases the odds of responsible ownership. The rules also require a health clearance and a background check and demand safe storage of weapons once they're purchased. In a country more populous than New York City, there were seven homicides using guns during all of last year. The test is obligatory for anybody who wants a weapon, including hunters, collectors, and even some inheriting a shotgun from a grandfather. The standards are high. The test consists of questions randomly drawn from a pool of 501 possible. Those trying to obtain the hard-to-get license for concealed carry can miss no more than one question. The failure rate is around 40%. Okay? Practice lessons aren't mandatory, but without it, you have a minimal chance of passing. There's a government app and a website where people can study up for the, part of the, for the written part of the exam. That's a good thing. That's a great thing. 
That is a necessity. Okay? That should be the only way that you can approach this subject matter. It blows my mind that this is completely and utterly unimaginable. Okay? It's just not even a thing here in the United States of America. You don't need any of this shit in most places. I hate it. I don't know. I don't know what else to say about it other than what I've said time and time again. There's a reason why this is a uniquely American phenomena. There's a reason why America is the only country where this happens with the great frequency that it happens. As you can see from those live pictures, police and ambulance are still very much at the scene. Uh, one person who was also at the scene was Professor Sergei Medvedev. He was inside the Charles University building in Prague when the shooting happened. He described the experience to me. So I was uh, uh, in the auditorium. I was giving a lecture at the moment. And um, we first didn't quite realize what happened uh, because uh, there were some sounds. Uh, well, the students, I think, heard it better because it was so much concentrated on my talking, on my lecture. Then we stayed, we stayed in the auditorium. Uh, we understood that uh, something big is happening. There was nothing online yet. Uh, no, nothing in the Czech uh, press and the networks. And then at some point, uh, the special operation troops, you know, went storming in. They searched the room briefly and then went out. After which we, and they stayed us to, uh, told us to stay inside. So I understood that uh, something big has happened. That uh, And then there was some shooting. Probably there was already shooting by the police forces, uh, liquidating the shooter himself. Uh, and then we stayed inside. We stayed away from the doors. We barricaded the door. We put all the you know desks uh, against the door. We didn't. We turned off the lights. We didn't stay close to the windows. And then one hour later, uh, another police squad broke in and then put us on the floor. Briefly searched us and then evacuated from the building. So we are now in the neighboring concert hall called the Rudolfino. And uh, so we're all assembled here and our documents checked and we're waiting for further developments. Professor, how frightening was that to have to barricade yourselves in that uh, uh, lecture room for a whole hour before you knew what was, uh, what was happening and you knew that you could get out? Yeah, we barricaded ourselves in the classroom and it was absolutely terrifying. Also, the photo of students on the roof is real. One of my friends was there. That's crazy. I don't know. Maybe the fright will come later. I wasn't really frightened at the moment. Uh, also, you know, when they're students, uh, you feel responsibility. So you're really uh, thinking about the people for whom you're responsible for. No, it was more like, you know, calm curiosity. I didn't know about the um, human loss then. Uh, so maybe it will dawn on me later. As we were evacuated uh, and we were walking on the stairs and there's this historic marble stairs there and they're all splashed with blood. There was lots of blood on the stairs and uh, I wouldn't say so the dead bodies, uh, but I see the crutches. Uh, pro probably there were bodies on the crutches, so probably they were already evacuated by then. Uh, and then we were briskly evacuated uh, from the building. That must have been just horrible to see that as you were walking down those stairs. You know what? In the moment that it is happening... You're... I think when you say... <clears throat> I know this is impossible to prove, but everyone knows this American culture being exported tragically. No, man. When you have guns, there's going to be a fucking mass shooting, no matter what happens. Like, the likelihood that there will be gun violence when you have guns is obviously higher. The difference is, it's not about, it's not about like eliminating every single instance of gun violence. You can't do that. That's not how laws work. It's not. It's never a perfect world. You're never perfectly safe. The goal is to make sure you can prevent as many instances of gun violence as possible. So I don't know if this is a a, a unique one-off, right? Or if it's a uh, it, you know becoming more and more a reality for European countries due to like American culture, anything like that. But the thing is most countries, unlike the United States of America, absolutely fucking lootly do take additional measures when things like this happen to ensure that it never happens again. Okay. That's the whole point. Just like, for example, many of the measures that, are implemented all around the world that basically create hurdles 
in front of gun ownership are not necessarily created so you can literally eliminate gun ownership in general, okay, and and uh, and and destroy gun violence in its entirety. That's not going to happen. That's like impossible. As long as there is any gun out there in circulation, the likelihood that that gun will be used inappropriately is is you know it, it increases dramatically in comparison to not having a gun at all. But when you add additional hurdles, no matter how silly, like the security theater that TSA brings, right? Doesn't actually have to have a incredibly effective, uh, uh, an incredibly effective measure at like genuinely stopping acts of terror. The security theater in that moment makes it harder because you have to work around it. And many people don't want to take that step. The easier, the less barriers there are to gun ownership, the easier it is for someone on a fucking whim to go out and and purchase a gun and do something crazy with it. People forget how much nuisances and and like additional restrictions genuinely stop as broad a swath of the population as possible. People don't realize that. It's not about actually just perfectly working 100% of the time. It's about decreasing the likelihood that it could happen. It's never going to eradicate it in its entirety until you, you know, liquidate every gun inside of a border, inside of a, a, a boundary, right? That's it. So that's also interesting. We have very strict gun laws. This is the ninth mass shooting since 1989, and four of them happened in the last four years. Yeah. I'm in Jersey. I want a gun, but no, but not more than I want to go through the rigmarole of getting a gun in New Jersey. Exactly. It stops a lot of people from getting a fucking weapon because they don't want to go through it. Suicide is a perfect example of this, which is ironically, of course, and in, in, in a very sad, very tragic way, a big part of the gun deaths in this country, right? Suicide is a perfect example. This is the harder you make it, the less likely people will do it. They don't always find a way. And yet there are still people who do, right? But uh, suicide prevention, specifically for veterans in this country, if you want to understand how fucked the situation is, we don't have good, adequate mental health treatment for our veterans in this country, many of them riddled with PTSD. So what is our biggest suicide prevention for veterans? Oh, the Veterans Affairs like actually releases an ad around the holidays for every suicidal vet to see when they're watching Twitch at the top of the fucking hour and there's a three-minute ad being served that shows you, uh, that, that's, uh, that sells you or gives you for free a lock that you can put on your gun safe. Because in those 30 seconds that you are unlocking, fiddling around with your fucking lock, you contemplate whether or not you should do it. The, the ad also features a photo of your children or your loved ones inside of the gun case. So you have to look at them before you go on with the act of killing yourself. That's insanely fucking dark. Okay? Not as dark as uh, basically doing a segue through that. But, you know, I'm all out. I'm, I'm out of fucking kindness on this issue. I've talked about this so many fucking times. Anyway, uh, we're going to move on from this story. Uh, into our guest segment with Brace Belden, formerly known as Piss Pit Granddad, formerly known as uh, the Gourmand, in a second. But before I do that, here's the three minute ad break now. We are going to be talking about Jeffrey Jebediah Epstein. Damn, this guy's good. <laughs> <laughs> 